Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmen Cita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes MBS a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. To ensure that newborns are truly healthy, they must undergo newborn screening, a public health program that helps determine if a baby is born with one of the more than 20 congenital disorders. Its importance cannot be overemphasized. If any of the congenital disorders is left undetected and not managed immediately, it can lead to mental retardation and even death. It was integrated into the public health delivery system with the enactment of Republic Act 9288 or Newborn Screening Act of 2004. Now part of PhilHealth's newborn care package, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers nationwide. It has also saved thousands of children. This educational series is intended for health professionals who deliver services of the newborn screening program. Whether you are online or offline, this program aims to further enrich your knowledge in newborn screening and be able to apply the highest quality of service to Filipinos, especially during the challenging times. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the moment the baby is born and into the continuing care available for newborns found positive. We will also zero in on the features and management in each of the conditions included in newborn screening panel. We will also interview patients as well as their parents. And in keeping up to the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators, one in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, med techs, nutritionists, as well as students in the health professions. So take a seat, get comfortable as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. My name is Christian Joy Conicolas. Uh, Mother of Marty Nicolas, uh, I'm 33 years old, working as a bank employee and assistant manager. My husband is working as OFW. Ah, uh, challenges kasi uh, pagdating sa food, di kasi normal yung pagtake nila ng food day. Eh. For example, uh, hindi sila pwede sa beef, chicken, pork, uh, mga seafood. Limited lang yung protein na kailangan nila i-intake. So, we have a dietitian na ilan lang yung per grams na pwedeng i-take ni Martin per day. So, siguro yung pinaka-struggles talaga na mahirap yung gatas. Kasi yung gatas kasi abroad namin binibili. May free kami nakukuha sa NIH, which is yung donation. Ang ano lang kasi, minsan kasi dumarating yung point na nagkakaubusan ng gatas. So, yung mga nagdo-donate, hindi agad nakakapagpadala dito sa Philippines. So, wala kami choice. Need namin bumali abroad. Yung gatas niya, uh, MSUD, para talaga siya sa maple syrup urine disease. Dun sa mga bagong mamis na may MSUD, uh, kung makikita nyo kasi si Martin, as in parang normal talaga siya eh. Uh, nakakapaglakad siya, nakakapagsalita, pumapasok sa school. Siguro yung ano na lang, uh, yung control. Yung control talaga eh, sa mga kinaka- kinakain ng bata. Tsaka yung, yung disiplina. Uh, yun na, number one talaga yun eh. Na, uh, ikaw talaga yung magtuturo dun sa anak mo kung ano talaga yung pwede at bawal kainin. Talagang ano, disiplina, uh, Pagsunod sa doktor, yan talaga importante para maging maganda yung resulta na may batang may MSUD. 
nutrition therapy plays an essential role in restoring and maintaining metabolic homeostasis in MSUD. The goals of medical nutrition therapy in MSUD are to rapidly reduce toxic metabolites by restricting dietary branched chain amino acids or BCAA to amounts allowing the individuals to achieve and maintain plasma BCAA amino acid concentrations within the targeted treatment ranges, reduce catabolism, promote anabolism, monitor nutritional status, and alter intake to promote normal growth, development, and health maintenance. In this episode, we will learn strategies in feeding our MSUD patients with nutritious, low-protein food and products locally available in the country. In addition, we will also share some food preparations using low-protein recipes. So today, we have four special guests. Dr. Leah Hamoy, a clinical geneticist and a metabolic medicine specialist from the University of the Philippines, Manila. Dr. Mavel De Claro, a medical specialist at the Newborn Screening Continuity Clinic in Bicol Regional Training and Teaching Hospital. Dr. Calibo, a pediatrician and deputy director of DOST Food and Nutrition Research and Ms. Jean Basas, a metabolic dietitian at the Institute of Human Genetics, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Welcome to Newborn Screen in Focus, Dr. Leah, Dr. Anthony, Dr. Mave, and of course, Jean, our nutritionist. So in the last episode, we had an extensive discussion of what MSUD is all about. We discussed the short and the long-term care of these patients. And you know, many times we discuss the importance of nutritional management. So for this episode, we're just going to talk about the, about the nutritional management of MSUD. So let me ask Dr. Leah, uh, just exactly what do you mean by natural protein? And then maybe you can just give a very brief description or uh, definition for what MSUD is for those who are coming in only just now. MSUD is an inborn error of protein metabolism. So because the body is unable to break down certain amino acids, particularly leucine, isoleucine, and valine, then these three amino acids are the ones that accumulate in the body. So ayaw po natin na sumusobra yung leucine sa ating katawan kasi yun yung nagkukos ng ating mga sintomas, nagkukos ng um, neurotoxicity or damage to the brain. So in order to manage that through the diet, we therefore have to calculate the amount of protein that is being taken in. So yun po ang ating pong nililimit ay yung natural protein or intact protein. Yung protein po na nakikita sa gatas, sa pagkain, uh, yung naturally nakikita sa ating um, everyday food. So yun po yung tinatawag nating natural protein, yun po yung ating kinakount, yung binibila. Okay, so Dr. Leah, in the last episode, you actually informed the viewers that uh, the mothers can breastfeed, but they, you prefer that they express so that we can calculate the amount of protein that's being given to the baby. Is that correct, Dr. Leah? Yes, definitely po. We definitely encourage mothers to breastfeed because of the many advantages of breastfeeding. And syempre, ayaw natin na magkasakit tong mga baby na to dahil may MSUD na nga sila and at risk na nga sila and breastfeeding will be protective. But we encourage them to measure the amount of breast milk that they give and they'll be able to do that if they express the milk and then count how many ounces or how many um, mls of milk did they give for that day and they will follow what the doctors and the nutritionists have advised them to give in a 24-hour time period thank you dr leah so you mentioned um the natural protein and also it's a matter of um uh, the, the MSU, the baby with MSUD should only receive a certain amount. So w when you say natural protein, can, can we just give examples no? for a baby, you know, what are the, the sources? And as the baby gets older, what are the natural, the, the sources of natural protein? 
So definitely in the first six months, the main source of natural protein will be the breast milk. Um, and there's nothing more natural than that. So that's what we get the natural protein from. And we count and we tell them up to what amount they can get. No? So, halimbawa, sasabihin natin, okay, mommy, ganito lang po kadami yung uh, ounces ng breast milk na maibibigay nyo sa baby. The rest of the energy will come from the specialized formula that is safe for them, that has no leucine, isoleucine, and valine. It's branched-chain amino acid-free. Um, once again, you know, in the last episode, Dr. Leah, you were saying that the care of a baby with MSUD goes beyond the screening and the discharge of the baby from the hospital or the birthing center. So um, maybe at this point, I'd like to uh, request Dr. Mavi to explain what is the role of the continuity clinic in the overall care uh, for children with uh, babies with MSUD? Dr. Yes, Mavi. Yes, ma'am. So the continuity clinic um, caters to the long-term management of these patients. Once this patient is seen by the short-term clinic and um, a diagnosis, a final diagnosis is made, these patients are then endorsed to us and the continuation of the management is being catered by the continuity clinic. So, so Dr. Mave, you're saying that um, in our program, uh, when a baby under, undergoes newborn screening, the diagnosis is actually closed by the newborn screening center. And when the patient has been diagnosed and uh, uh, the patient is endorsed to the continuity clinic. So in your case, you are receiving the referral primarily for, for the Bicol region, Dr. Mave? Yes, ma'am. Um, my area is the Bicol region, ma'am. So we... Um, those patients who are who, who already have final diagnosis from the Bicol region, and it is then endorsed to us uh, in our continuity clinic from the Bicol Regional Teaching and Training Hospital for continuation of care. Okay, so since we're talking about nutrition right now, and we talked about a special formula, where are you getting your supply of special formula, uh, Dr. Dr. Mave? Ma'am, our special formula milk is being given by the NIH okay. through the DOH. Okay, so once again, we hear no, that if you are a patient in the program, uh, there is a provision for the, for the milk, but you can see now the importance of the continuity clinic because, of the continu because you know, the milk will have to be delivered and given to the patients and they have to follow up. So, so Dr. Mave, I, I just want to know the, uh, let the viewers know that you're not only dealing with MSGD, but you're actually taking care of all the patients with a positive diagnosis. Can you just give the viewers a chance, uh, give them a list of the cases that you're following up right now before we just uh, go back to MSUD? Um, we cater to all the newborn screening, um, uh, new, uh, for all the diseases in the newborn screening program, such as the CH, CAH, MSUD, um, what else, fe fe uh, phenylketonuria, and all those um, uh, metabolic disorders is being catered by the continuity clinic. So Dr. Mave, what makes it more challenging, or is it more challenging to take care of a baby with, with MSUD? Um, all of them are actually challenging, ma'am, but with this MSUD patients, we really have to be very strict with their diets. And we really wanted to avoid them being sick in order for crisis not to set in so that they can live a normal life. So how do you check when you were saying that you, know, you want to make sure that they follow the, the prescription? So can you share with, the, with our viewers how are you able to check that the patients are really following your instructions? Yes, ma'am. Um, adherence to the diet of these patients is very important in the management of our MSUD patients. Our continuity clinic does monthly checkups for these patients. So during these monthly checkups, we not only check for their nutritional status, we check for the developmental, we check for the progress in their development and we check for the, their growth percentiles, and we also do monthly leucine monitoring. So 
with this, we can gauge that um, they, with, with these um, tools, we can gauge if the patient is really adhering to the diet of the patients. And during also these follow-ups, we take time to talk to the parents. Um, we have um, open forum if they, they, they are having problems with their supplies, in, with regards to their formula meal or their food supplies, or if they are having feed, feeding difficulties with their children so that we can address it properly. Nauubos ang kabalang supply, Dr. Mave? Uh, actually, ma'am, just for the past two months, we have been uh, previously, kasi ma'am, these patients, they receive at least six cans of this, this special formula milk per month. Pero the following months, they only receive two cans per month. So we address this by um, referring our patients to our dietitian so that uh, their, uh, their diet can be adjusted. Uh, in terms of the availability of the formula milk and so that other food products can be incorporated in their diet. Okay. So just before I call in, Jean, I, I want to go back to Dr. Lee and, and ask, um, how do you monitor that, the, um, that the, the amount of protein being received by the patient is adequate, Dr. Lee? By two things, po. Now, so one is we have to get reports from the parents themselves. So they have to give us a report of um, their diet, uh, what they've actually been giving their children. And the other is by monitoring their leucine levels. So we have to do it very regularly. Um, and it's a continuous um, um, monitoring and adjustment of their diet based on the levels of leucine that we get. So, kung wari po, mataas yung leucine na makuha namin and then um, we will have to adjust the diet to decrease the leucine intake or the protein intake. Kung halimbawa naman masyadong mababa yung leucine na makuha natin, then we will adjust the diet to increase the protein para naman hindi po siya mag-protein deficiency. Okay, so, so both of you mentioned the importance of the nutritionist, no? Na, uh, Dr. Leah mentioned that, you know, when you start giving your supplementary feeding, you really want a nutritionist. And here, we also heard uh, Dr. Mavi telling us that when they run short of supply, they, they connect with the nutritionist just to find out what alternative food items can be given. So let me call our nutritionist, doctor, a doctor, uh, the future doctor, <laughs> Jean. Uh, Share with us your experience with the patients with MSUD. Um, okay, so the toppings na nila Dr. Mave and Dr. Lia, um, it's very uh, it's very important that the, the diets of these patients are really monitored, and that is why we really develop a relationship with this family, especially their caregivers, wherein we try to do regular follow-ups um, and talk about their diet. Uh, Dr. Mave already mentioned that we have to discuss what feeling difficulties they are experiencing so that we can provide assistance. As well as we want to make the daily diet convenient for preparation for our parents or caregivers and as well as a uh, palatable for our patients. Um, it's very challenging but it's very fulfilling once you get to see these patients grow up to their optimal um, expected growth. So, Jean, give us an example. No? I mean, you, you want to give high energy and you've got a, a let's say, a gram. So maybe before, before I go to, before you answer that question, let's just talk about a, a one-year-old baby, Dr. Leah, just to give our viewers a chance. You know, When you talk about how much protein can they receive? And then maybe I'm going to ask Leah, I'm going to ask Jean to translate that into food items, assuming that we ran out of milk and she was, she will have to give it. Can you give an example, Dr. Leah? Um, so let's say that that baby is um, uh, uh, that, that the baby's tolerance of protein is one gram per kilogram. And let's say that the baby's, let's just make it easy. And let's just say that the baby's weight is 10 kilograms and we and that baby is tolerating one gram per kilogram of protein. So that means that um, that baby can only have 10 grams of protein um, per day. So our nutritionist will be computing then 
uh, where will that baby get the 10 grams from? So, ibigay niya ngayon po yung mga options na yun doon sa ating families. Um, and, hindi naman po ito eksaktong-eksakto na itong araw na to itlog ang kakainin mo sa kanabukasan ganito. Hindi naman po natin sila ginagawang uh, very rigid but we educate them and we have to tell them that these are their options and ito yung limit of the protein that they can have. So, yun po. For example, a, a 10 kilogram baby let's say we'll be able to tolerate 10 grams of protein then that's what we will um, compute for and kung ano po yung um, energy or calories na kulang pa galing doon sa um, intake niya pupunan na lang po yun with our special protein free or branch chain amino acid free formula so, so uh, jean can you tell us what is 10 grams of protein if I have a, if I have a baby who's, you know, as, as uh, Dr. Leah said, 10 kilos, and I can only give about 10 grams, what is its equivalent in ordinary food? Okay, so if we are to prepare a diet plan for a child that is one year old with 10 grams natural protein, usually we, uh, we assume that this patient is already finishing her complementary feeding stage. So as much as we wanted to maximize um, the natural protein to be coming from the, the regular food items, we want to allocate some of it for the milk. That is why at least 70% um, will be coming from the regular food items and 30% will be coming from our um, breast milk or whatever um, regular milk does the child have. So for that seven grams that will be remain uh, that will be getting from our regular foods, usually a portion of that, say two grams or three grams, will be will be getting it from a rice from rice. So that's three fourth cup of rice. So from the seven, we're down to four grams. Um, two grams of that will be getting from our vegetables. So we use um, vegetable exchanges that are modified for our patients. So. Now that we're down to two grams, one gram will be getting it from the fruit exchanges. This is aside from the free fruits that we have. So um, the counted fruits are banana, avocado, um, melon. Those are the things that we get one gram from. And then the remaining one gram is for the for the child to experience snacks. So these um, low protein snacks that are available in, in commercial. So that is how we break it down. If the patient has an increased appetite, but with a limited protein, we provide high energy drinks or zero, or, or zero gram um, protein food sources to suffice the need of the child. Can you give us examples of zero protein uh, energy drinks? Okay, so for the zero um, gram protein energy drinks, we make use of our free fruits for. So our free fruits are apple, um, pear, watermelon, pineapple, mango. So these fruit items, they can prepare it as a juice or as a blended um, or as a shake to provide to the child. It can also be eaten raw as is. So these okay, are Jean, some of our zero gram. Jean, I need you to give me something more that's more affordable. Okay. Meron ba? So, uh, <laughs> um, usually, po, um, let's say zero gram protein also comes from our certain noodles. So yung mga mura pong noodles like vermicelli or sotanghon, that is also zero gram. So they can offer it as a substitute for a child instead of rice, which has actual protein. So they can they can have that. Um, in terms of yung mga mura po kasi ng mga prutas like banana, these are also high in protein. That's why um, we uh, need the help of a dietitian to actually provide and indicate a certain amount of this uh, food item if that's what the patient wants or the family can afford. Okay, so the message I'm getting from so far from uh, from our team is that um, you cannot guess. Uh, you've got to work with a team who will actually calculate the protein content of everything that the baby is receiving. Hindi, hindi siya pa pwedeng para bang, I think low protein to, so I'm going to take it. This is a fruit, so it's low protein. So um, 
uh, indispensable talaga ang role ng nutritionist when you start this uh, uh, the supplementary feeding. Now, the, the, the biggest challenge really in uh, the, uh, the Philippines is that we don't have this low protein um, food items no? because there are commercial ones overseas. And maybe before I call in Dr. Kaliba to tell us you know, what the government is planning to do, can you just share, Jean, what are the other food items that are commercially available overseas that can be, that can be you know, the protein-free items that are being sold? Abroad, they have available low-protein pasta and noodles, which are usually at around 5 grams per serving here in the Philippines. They also have low-protein rice. But we, we, um, it, the good news is we also have modified rice, low-protein rice here provided by one um, Japanese uh, manufacturer that actually has um, 0.3 grams of protein per serving. In other countries, they also have biscuits like um, and even snacks like um, bread, pizza, pasta sauces, even chowders. They have that soups that they can provide to our patients, specifically made for IEM patients. So we're really hoping that soon these products will be made available here for our patients. Well. That is the reason why I invited Dr. Anthony Calivo to this panel because I am aware that the FNRI uh, has some plans for our patients. So may I now call in uh, Dr. Calivo? I just want to mention to the viewers that uh, Dr. Calivo has been working for more than a decade at the Department of Health. He was actually one of our partners and, um, and he has been part of the history of newborn screening. So now that he's at FNRI, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, we'd like to hear what is in store for us uh, from the side of the government. Dr. Anthony. Good, morning. good afternoon, Chancellor, and good day to all our viewers all over the world uh, for this uh, virtual uh, recording of our uh, session. And of course, happy po, uh, to be with the UP Manila team, uh, especially po with the newborn screening, NIH, IHG. Uh, the, the USC Food and Nutrition Research Institute is uh, also very interested in pursuing a lot of RNDs uh, to benefit our uh, infants affected uh, with inborn errors of metabolism. Uh, I think ever since uh, we have been encountering MSUD patients. And of course, with the enactment of the rare disease law, uh, we have received a lot of uh, interest in developing products that will be geared towards the management of these uh, groups of patients. Um, based on our last meeting last year, uh, I think that was sometime August, uh, that we explored the possibility of uh, having a low protein flour and at the same time, uh, the type of uh, milk that can be also locally produced. Uh, under the Nutrition and Food Research and Development Division, headed by the Division Chief, uh, Chief Science Research Specialist, uh, Engineer Rosemary Garcia, uh, we have submitted uh, proposals to the Pichard uh, or Picard, I'm not sure which, which among them will be funding this, but it's uh, the development of uh, local uh, development of local uh, low protein flour from local agricultural products no? uh, and uh, hopefully this gets to be funded so that the product development stage will commence uh, middle of this year and hopefully we can implement this already by uh, 2022. The other one is looking into the development of low protein milk uh, and I think there are uh, certain uh, restrictions in terms of uh, plasma amino acids, which is, I think, very costly. Uh, but this is already part of the research agenda. And uh, the team also of Engineer Garcia is looking for uh, external funding because the general uh, appropriations fund may not be adequate uh, to, uh, to fund the research uh, expenses necessary for this. The other products that we are uh, looking into is the non-food related, which are tools uh, for our dietitians, nutritionists. Uh, and this will be looking into um, recipe guides or menus uh, for inborn errors of metabolism uh, patients. 
And likewise, even the uh, food composition table uh, that uh, may also be uh, uh, customized, no? uh, what can be the unique needs of uh, families uh, with children or even uh, young adults who have actually survived uh, the difficult uh, management of childhood MSUD. Uh, we are committed, uh, Chancellor Padilla, to really pursue further technical discussions and like the technical working group between NIH, UP Manila, and the FNRI uh, to be really concretized and uh, to have more forum for exchanges and discussions. Thank you for the invitation, Chancellor. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. I mean, uh, that's, uh, it's nice to hear that, you know, we have something that can probably materialize, as you said, by, by 2022. Did, that, did I hear that, hear that right? Uh, uh -huh possibility that uh, this, this will move by then. So I, I guess, you know, for our viewers, I and this is not only for MSUD, the, the problem really is that these babies are alive, they, they grow up, and they have needs. And um, they cannot be dependent on milk forever. And we really have to come up with the solid food items uh, that they can actually partake. So um, Dr. Leah, do you have any reaction to the uh, to the, to the comments of Dr. Anthony. Is there anything else you'd like to request from him while he's here with us in this panel? No, I, I was very happy to hear that for Dr. Anthony and we look forward to that and to uh, collaboration with you. Okay, so I think so far what we've heard from the team is that um, nutrition, as, uh, as we've heard many times in this episode and in the last episode, nutritional management is the mainstay for metabolic conditions like the maple syrup urine disease. And that is the reason why we are trying to find ways to provide the local items to our group. I I'd like to maybe request Dr. Lee answer this question because, um, uh, of course, you know, we have continuity clinics all over the country for the, for the information of our viewers. We have 14 right now. And um, the goal really is to have one in every province. No? Uh, you heard the role of Dr. Mave. Dr. Mave explained that she was in charge of just ensuring the follow-up of all the patients in the Bicol region. No? But then how do they connect with the specialist, Dr. Leah? Maybe you can also explain to our viewers, where will the expertise come from? Who will partner with them? So the DOH recently um, released their administrative order that includes the formation of the Centers for Human Genetic Services in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and possibly even more branches in the future. And um, the CHGS, or Center for Human Genetic Services, will oversee the long-term management for these patients diagnosed through the newborn screening program and will give access to the continuity clinics, um, connect the continuity clinics to the experts in the different fields. Uh, uh, would you like us to, to just give us a, a gauge of uh, where the centers for human genetic services are and then what are the plans? Because um, um, I, I want all the continuity clinics to feel that they, they are not alone and that um, the Centers for Human Genetics Services are there. Maybe I should tell them that Dr. Leah actually is the uh, overall head of all the Centers for Human Genetic Services. She's actually helping us now set up the different centers in the different parts of the country. So I, I, I want our coordinators to, to appreciate that um, much as we have been getting the, the coverage that we need, it's not enough that we have the coverage. We have to start looking at the outcomes, and which is not the primary purpose, the, the primary vision mission of the Center for Human Genetic Services. So get, can you just mention where the, the first three are? Just uh... So we're currently um, setting up or have um, set up the Luzon uh, which is in Manila, Visayas, which is in Cebu. We're setting up Mindanao, which is going to be in Davao. And we will be setting up soon another center in Luzon, this time in northern Luzon, and another center in Mindanao, so um, possibly northern Mindanao. Okay, and so we hope to have those um, additional centers um, by 2023. 
Thank you. So, Dr. Mavia, do you feel like, you know, you, are you getting the, the technical support that you need and tell us what else is needed so that we can work on it, Dr. Mave? Um, yes, definitely, ma'am. Um, being in the continuity clinic um, as a general pediatrician, um, um, I really need to um, connect to these specialists, especially the, our geneticists, in order for me to, in order for us, in order for me to um, somehow manage the patient in, in our level. So, hindi ka nag-iisa, Dr. Mave, ah. but I, I want everybody to, to feel here that we're trying to cover all the areas that's, that's needed for the total care for the patient. So, um, well, it's been a, 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 any final words? Let me start now first with, uh, with Jean. Let's start with Jean. Let me have some final words from each of our panelists before we close this, uh, this episode. Dr. Jean, uh, Jean, our nutritionist. So I think um, the most important thing that we I want to leave here is that dietitians are partners, not only of the doctors, but also of the families of these MSCD patients, as protein-restricted diet is essential. In terms of protein intake, um, what we want to remember is we should measure to ensure that these MSCD children are guided to eat well and be well. So that's, that's all. Thank you. Dr. Mave. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to tell... Uh, everybody that the continuity clinic is here to uh, to help in the continuation of the management for this patient. Um, even even the the little things like um, dadalhin namin yung formula milk at i-deliver mismo sa mga bahay nila, gagawin po namin yon just for the sake of these patients, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Mave. Dr. Leah? Um, the success of the newborn screening program, particularly in the um, long-term outcomes of our MSUD patients, will definitely depend not only on the expertise of geneticists, but also of the entire team. And this time, I don't mean just the medical team, but as a as you've seen in this episode, even our partners in the food development, in DOST, FNRI, all of these contributions will help us to um, improve the lives of our patients. Dr. Anthony, baka gusto mo patagdagan ng promises mo sa amin. Um, pursuant to Secretary de la Peña's uh, slogan of science for the people, and I think FNRI being the premier agency of the government for uh, food and nutrition uh, research and development, we are morally bound to make sure that uh, not uh, all children, uh, regardless of their medical conditions, will receive uh, appropriate technology uh, that can be accessible uh, by those in need. And clearly, um, there seems to be really a, a gap of the availability of these products. And that's where really R&D comes in. What benefits our people, I think, uh, should be really felt. Uh, it may take some time, but at least I think the realization that there's a need for these products for the for our children's uh, future and welfare. So uh, I I would really thank uh, that the opportunity for hearing uh, the issues and concerns uh, of this episode, and we will work together uh, for the benefit of our children and for our future. Salamat po. Well, thank you. Thank you very much to our panelists for a very lively discussion on the nutritional management of MSUD. Our panelists reiterated the value of nutritional management in the care of our patients. And indeed, this is a team effort involving so many teams. Um, the newborn screening center team takes care of the diagnosis and the, the short-term short -term follow-up with the help of the geneticists. We've heard Dr. Mave telling us that the continuity clinic team is there to handle the long-term care and their assistance goes beyond the medical care. We have the team of uh, the attending physician and the families uh, working together with the nutritionist in the preparation of the diet plans. And today we're very happy to note that FNRI is truly on board as they develop a low-protein flour from local agricultural products by 2020 
and the team of Dr. Calibo and uh, Engineer Garcia of FNRI are exploring also the development of a low-protein milk. It's also happy to note that FNRI is not only looking at, at um, food products, they're also looking at non-food products like recipe guides and expanding the food composition table uh, that will detail the amino acids that we need in preparation of the food products. Well, uh, for us, maybe the message here of FNRI is that the FNRI, FNRI team is here committed to concretize the plans that have been that, that have been put forth by Dr. Calibo. In today's episode, we, we have appreciated that there is actually so much hope because of the partnerships that are happening. And um, this episode also shows that the management of MSUD is also a whole of society approach, not only among the medical and the specialists and the pediatricians, the physician, but bringing in government and all other sectors of uh, the health profession. So we would like to thank Dr. Leah, Dr. Mave, Dr. Jean, and Dr. Anthony for, um, for making this a, a lively discussion and bringing hope to our patients, especially those uh, for the parents with, with MSUD. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph or also include the hashtag, hashtag ENBSPH. Before we end, I want to again take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools in learning, our eNBS mobile app. The eNBS mobile app is a one-stop hub for all newborn screening health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening. It also features a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. If you have already downloaded the app, answer the quiz that we will send to your inbox and earn those points. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this video series, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. Next week, we'll feature the newborn screening teams from different centers for health development offices. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Dapat magpa-newborn screening Kaya dapat magpa-newborn screening Napakadali ng 
process na magpa NBS. Ilang patak ng dugo ang kailangan para magawa ang best. Makalipas ang 24 oras pag si baby lumabas. Gawin natin ng NBS ang lead sunod sa batas. Oh, I'm your baby. Suck and blessing. Kaya dapat magpanyubong screening. Oh, I'm your baby. Suck and blessing. Kaya dapat magpanyubong screening. Sa iyo rin to, sa kalusutan